Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 108. Being in a single child home. I am your host, Joseph Whalen, and my encouraging and inspiring co host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing all right. How about <clears throat> you? I'm doing fantastic today. <clears throat> so, the title for this podcast is kind of deceiving, I guess. Um, the original top- topic was going to be uh, what it's like being an only child. Well, technically, you're not an only child. It's just that your brother doesn't live with us. Yeah. So it's a single child home, which covers both your situation and just people who are only childs. Yeah. Children, however you say it. (laughs) Anyway, so today we're going to be talking about what it's like to live in a single child home, um, what it's like to be an only child. We'll also talk about the advantages of being an only child as well as the disadvantages. And then we'll get some insight into uh, what it's like being a a single child from you, because you are, uh, and how it's affected your life. Alrighty. Uh, Before we get started, though, I would encourage folks to subscribe to the podcast If you want to get video versions of all of our podcast shows, you can look up Insights Into Things. If you just want the audio version of this podcast, you can look up Insights Into Teens. We are listed on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon, and any place you can get a podcast. I would also encourage folks to email us or contact us with feedback and show suggestions. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We're on Twitter at insights underscore things. On Facebook, you can get us at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, we're at insights into things, or you can get links to all those and direct contact to us on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Shall we get started? Yes, we shall. Okay. So you were kind enough to do some <clears throat> research for us, uh, and the site that you chose to do research from was wehavekids.com, not your mom.com. That's the, we're not using yeah. that one this week. Yeah, we know. So the research that you did talked about, is it good to be an only child? Why don't you give us some of the background on the research that you did? So there's a myth that some people believe, um... That someone who is an only child is likely to be more selfish than someone with siblings. Kids with no siblings used to be commonly called the lonely child. These kids are shown to be more antisocial and don't work well with others. But there are certain skills that single children have that those with siblings do not. So there are, an- <clears throat> there are uh, advantages and disadvantages, uh, apparently, to being an only child. Um, Why don't we talk about the advantages of being an only child, or in your case, a child from a single child household. So the first one that they talk about here is that only uh, children, uh, not only children, (laughs) he got it written wrong there, Hmm. Um, children from a, a single child household get all the love and attention of their parents without having to split it between siblings. So if you're the only one in the house, you get all the attention. Is that, is that something that you can attest to in your experience? 
I mean, yeah, not that you don't love, <coughs> not that you guys don't love Sam any less. It's just that being with you guys all the time, you definitely devote a lot of your love and attention towards the child that lives at the home with you. So I would definitely say I get a bunch of love and attention um, whenever Sam's not around. And even when Sam's around, we both, you both kind of distribute the love equally. Yeah, you're you're kind of front and center there, you know, when Sam's not here. So the attention has to go somewhere. It either goes to the cats or it goes to you. <laughs> so the next thing they talk about is whatever an only child's parents buy them, they don't have to share it with any of their other siblings. Now, I can attest to that because I grew up in a house with three older brothers. And by the time something got to me clothes or toys or whatever it was usually handed down through three other brothers by the time i got to it it was very rare that i got new things just for me um so it kind of gave me an appreciation for those new things when i did get them and they were just for me uh the, does this sort of scenario play out with you where where you don't have to share things and and if it does how does it play into your appreciation of the things that you get? Well, you see, a lot of people think only children don't have to deal with hand-me-downs, but you'd be surprised to think that I've actually had a couple hand-me-downs. Some of them being technology-based, others being clothes, that kind of thing. But I do get stuff that you guys buy me on just buy me new things and i've appreciated the things that have been handed down they worked perfectly fine and they suited what i wanted um and i definitely appreciate whenever you guys do get me something new that like i i really enjoy and i definitely appreciate you guys for that yeah and i i would agree with you 100 percent. you're not unappreciative of anything that we give you nor are you demanding or expecting or you know uh, I wouldn't say you're spoiled because the stuff that we give you is not typically are not things that you ask for. Yeah. Um, there, there are things that, that, you know, mommy and daddy feel that you either should have or you deserve. And, and under those circumstances, I think it's perfectly fine. So they go on to say that only children grow up to be more independent and can fend for themselves better than those with siblings as long as their parents haven't spoiled them rotten. Um, obviously, you haven't gotten to the point where you're operating independently of, of us at this point in time, but what are your thoughts on that? Do you think being an only child, you get the freedoms to explore that independence more than if, if you had Sam living here full time? Probably, because I'm one of those people who prefer to do independent work, and that can probably be because I don't really socialize much, but I definitely am able to do work on my own, I'm able to think on my own, and I've done a lot of independent stuff, and I think now, especially when I've been doing schooling from home, I think that actually really benefits me, because I think I'm doing a lot better than someone who really wasn't so independent and actually needs that extra help. Well, that's a very good point. They talk about only kids don't have to live up to the expectations of their siblings and don't need to be compared to their successes. Now, again, coming from uh, a family with three older brothers, I, I wasn't necessarily in that sort of uh, situation with all my brothers, just my next highest brother up in age. He was four years older than me. So there was a lot of, uh, you know, don't do what your brother did or, or do, do it this way. Your brother was successful in this and you should be successful at it as well. I didn't get that so much with my older two brothers, but the younger brother that was just above me, I did. Um, do you think uh, something like that has had an effect on you where you haven't had that that model to live up to, to set those expectations to, do you think that results in you having lower or lesser expectations placed on you? Actually, I'm pretty sure I, 
I have higher expectations now. You guys not you guys haven't really put any expectations for me to be like Sam cuz well, I've never like heard you say like oh you should be more like your brother. It was more or less my own self telling me to improve and thus I've tried to excel in everything I do. Um and I think it I don't know if it ha if it entirely affected the fact that I was kind of raised um in an only child home um but in a single child home but um it could kind of have that effect and at times it can be good and other times it can probably be worrisome so eh. yeah and I think in this case at least in your specific case <clears throat> this isn't the situation um because you tend to put those expectations on yourself. So there's no comparison that needs to happen there. You're just very demanding of yourself to the point that you're more demanding of yourself than mommy and daddy are. Yeah. Um, I don't think that would have changed all that much if we, if you had a sibling that was living here full time. I think you'd still push yourself just as hard not to match their achievements or accomplishments, but just for your own satisfaction. True. Um, so they say only ch only children's parents will be able to set more money and attention aside for their child's education. Um, we obviously, you, you know, you're not college age at this point, so it doesn't 100% apply. But as far as money in general, do you think being an only child, you get more material uh, satisfaction or more material uh, wealth from being an only child? Do you think that would change if Sam was here on a regular basis? I mean, yeah, I'd probably think that would change a bit because in a way, I'm spoiled in a good way. Um, I'm not spoiled to the point where I expect everything or I demand things, and I definitely show appreciation for the things that I do get, but in terms of what I'm given, I definitely think I get more than what some what I would probably get if Sam was around more. So right. okay, I'm not sure I entirely agree with that, but because I, I, mean, I think because I think your needs and his needs are very different. True, and the costs associated with those needs are very different. True. Um, plus the fact that. Uh, We've always given you, well, and Sam, when Sam was with us, staying with us, uh, we always gave both of you the opportunity to earn money. Yeah. Um, and you both took advantage of that, and you had your own money to spend if you needed, if we went to a convention or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you aren't that much of a financial burden on us because you're generally – financially independent when it comes to the the novelty things that you want you know what i mean yeah true that makes sense i am pretty frugal with my money yes yes I'm, some would say cheap i'm not cheap no you're cheap trust me oh, really you always you say that i'm not cheap and you say that i'm frugal yet why are you calling me cheap now you are quick to spend our money, but you do not like to spend your own money. You really learn the value of a dollar by earning it yourself. That is a lesson that's well learned. So, yes. Okay, you're frugal. Does a, is that better? Yes. Okay, you're frugal. I'd appreciate being called that. Sure. Uh, what else do we have here? So, only children can become more comfortable talking to adults when they aren't surrounded by kids a few years younger or older than them. Given your anti-conversational nature um, uh, amongst other people, at least people that you don't know, I don't know if this is really the case, but do you think being an only child makes you more comfortable or more suited for having a conversation with an adult on a more peer-to-peer -peer level? I mean, I definitely think I actually have a bit... I think I am able to talk to adults a little better than I'm able to talk to people who are a couple years older or younger than me. Um, I think, like, 
I'm still able to talk, t still being an antisocial person. It's not that big of a difference, but I definitely think I, if I was to, because from pretty much most of my life, um, whenever we would go with extended family and such, I was mainly surrounded by people who were always older than me. There was no one really my age for the most part, no one really younger than me. So I definitely think that scenario, I definitely think I'm much more comfortable talking along and getting along with older people than I am younger people, but I have people who are younger than me that I'm friends with, so... Mm. So a happy balance there. Yeah. Okay. So the last thing they talk about here is that Parents are able to teach only children how to be independent, to build their confidence, and feel less pressure. Does that is that working for you? Because I know you've got, you know, we've had a number of uh, podcasts where we've talked about some of the anxiety and confidence issues you had and stuff like that. Do you think you would be more confident and feel less pressure if? your sibling was around on a more regular basis than you do now? I mean, I'm not entirely sure. Like, I've been getting a lot better now because um, I've kind of now built a bit more of my confidence. Um, I don't know entirely what would happen if Sam would stay here full time. Like, um, even though we do see him, I haven't really talked with him that much, so maybe if he did live here, I might talk with him more, and maybe that could build a bit more of my confidence and make me a little less antisocial, but, hmm. Okay. And it's all theoretical at this point. I, your guess is as good as mine. Yeah. Uh, that was all we had for the advantages for being an only child. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back, and we'll talk about the disadvantages of being an only child. For seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about being an only child or, or a single child uh, household. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the disadvantages of being an only child. So the research that you did tells us that only children could develop, quote, little emperor or empress syndrome if showered with all the love and attention from parents, making them act and feel like a little emperor or empress uh do you think that that's the case with you probably not like i don't order you guys around um i help i help you guys out um whenever you need a little bit of help so i definitely don't think that acting like an emperor like a little emperor or empress would probably do that um i appreciate everything that you guys do and i don't demand you do things um and I don't, like, expect things to be done. Um, I help you guys out, and, yeah, I don't really think that I've really had that experience. And I would agree. You, you do not have a Napoleon complex. <laughs> uh, they say only children can get used to their parents doing everything for them and expect it all the time. Now, do mommy and daddy do everything for you, or are you expected to sort of keep up your part of the household and, and family life? I mean, the fact that I've been given chores probably answers that question. I definitely am expected to vacuum, clean 
um, and do laundry. And there were some, like, small things that you guys asked me to do. Like, Mommy asked me to get some green beans from, um, downstairs. So, yeah, I definitely say that I don't expect you guys to do all, everything, um, and in, in cleaning, in keeping the house clean. And I definitely try and help out any way I can. Yeah, it's a team effort. Um, only children can lack self-confidence. Do you think you lack self-confidence? In a way, yeah. I have had moments where, although I do, um, although I do ha do good in certain things that I lack self confidence in, there are, I do have some problems with trying to be confident in myself, and I've gotten better, it's just still not really very high. Now, do you think that lack of self-confidence is the product or a byproduct of being in an only child household? I mean, I don't entirely think so. Like you mentioned um, before when I told you um, how I kind of push myself in certain ways, a lot of my self-confidence, um, a lot of my lack of self-confidence probably comes from that and the fact that you mentioned that I would probably still be pushing myself even if Sam was around. I probably still kind of lack a bit of self confidence, but if I, but if Sam was around, I think he could, it could be another, um, he could try and at least help me in any way he could. Sure, yeah, I'm sure he would. So they also say that uh, only children lack the help of older siblings and can put too much pressure on the parents, which could lead to conflicts. Uh, do you think that? Too much is asked of you that if you had another sibling here where the work was divided among you, that it would be easier on you? I don't think that the work um, I have right now is fine. Um, the chores are not overbearing, and I've gotten used to doing them at this point. Um, yeah, any other type of work that you guys give me, like tasks, I'm able to do normally. And, in fact, I'm able to do them better, probably because I'm fine with doing them independently. So, I wouldn't say that that um, happens too much. I think that's a good point. It's a fair observation. This next one's kind of uh, subjective and more probably for mommy or I to answer, but... They say that parents of only children can become too attached to their child's success and try to live through them rather than give them space. Now, a lot of times you see this, especially with uh, athletics, where you get those parents who live vicariously through their kids on the football field or the hockey rink or whatever, and you know they take the parents take it far more seriously than they should and far more seriously than the, than the kids do. But this could also be attached to academic achievement, professional achievement, and so forth. Do you think that mommy and daddy are that attached, that we live through your successes? Or do you feel like you get the space you need to grow and breathe? I definitely get the space I need to grow and breathe. And you guys don't put, uh, and you guys really don't live vicariously through me. Um, and you don't put, and I don't have that pressure in the back of my mind from it. Um, a lot of that pressure is, once again, just me just wanting to, me pushing myself forward. Um, and I don't really think that you guys affect that. Okay. Well, that's good. So I don't, I can check that off the to-do <laughs> list. Um, they say that these children can experience loneliness. Not having someone around their age, like a sibling to play with on a daily basis or to share their thoughts and feelings with can be difficult. And I want to sort of add to that, that especially under the circumstances we're living in now where you don't have direct interaction with your friends um, can certainly lead to loneliness. If you don't have someone, you know, in the house to lean on, do you think you suffer at all from this symptom? Well, I don't think too much now, but I do remember that when I was younger, before I started experiencing some of the main benefits, like independence, um, I would definitely like want to ask you guys if you wanted to play, and normally you guys would be doing something and say that you'd be busy, and 
Um, after some point, I kind of just stop ask, stopped asking. Because, That's so sad. Yeah, it's kind of. I, I feel terrible now. <laughs> it's, Jeez, it's kind of sad when you think about it. But you, you know, should have talked about these questions before the show. You know, I kind of, you know, I kind of grew from it, and you know, I'm at least a little more independent. But I'm not distant from you guys, so that's good. All right, so let's move on from that painful question to the next one that's going to make us look like terrible parents. <laughs> when the parents of only children get older, the children have to take the responsibility of taking care of their parents alone, and it can be overwhelming. Is that something that you fear, you know, when mommy and daddy get older, having to take care of us? I mean, I don't mind having to take care of you guys, um, but of course, I'm probably going to regret saying this when I'm older and I realize, oh, so I have to do all this. Great, but I'm pretty sure that more than likely Sam will be there um, to help you guys in at least some capacity, so I won't be entirely alone since I'm not really an only child and this is kind of something that happens outside of being in a single child home so but there is a chance where I might have to take care of you guys alone um and you know I'll just take it as it comes I guess well, there you go that's a good attitude and when I get to that point I'm just gonna just open a door and I'll just wander off into the woods <laughs> <clears throat> So let, one more question to make the parents look bad. So parents can put too much pressure on the only child, causing anxiety and low self-esteem. So are mommy and daddy guilty of that yet? No, I'm guilty of it myself, and you guys are the ones that actually have to help me um, not do that to myself. Um, so I don't think that it's really your, you at fault or the fault of me being an only child in a single child home. Uh, and it's mainly just me doing it. Okay, good. Then I don't feel too bad about that question. <laughs> so the rest that we have here is kind of more FYI information than anything else. They say in developed countries today, more than 47% of households with children are one-child families, which I didn't realize it was that high. Studies have shown that one of the main reasons parents have more than one child is because they fear the first child will grow up lonely without a sibling. Now, if you flash back 100 years ago, 150 years ago, you had much larger families. So you had families that had 5, 8, 10 siblings and the reason for that was because of how poor health care was. So a high percentage of those kids never made it past the age of 15. Mm -hmm. So you wound up having a lot of kids to increase your chances of, of survival, I guess, so to speak. Yeah. They say, however, research has said that all, uh, only children are no more selfish, spoiled, or lonely than anyone with siblings. In fact... Some are even better at socializing with adults and having better relationships with their parents. Now, in my case, um, I certainly was not an only child, but the age difference between me and my older siblings, so you had me, then my next brother was four years older. Then my next brother from there was eight years older than me. And then my next brother was 10 years older. So... By the time I got to the point that I could really associate with my siblings, my older two brothers were, were kind of out of the house and out of the picture for the most part. It was just my next brother up. Um, and he didn't like me. So, <laughs> I mean, there's no easy way to sugarcoat that. Yeah. Um, he was very jealous of me because of the attention that I got that he was getting before I came along, which is pretty typical of, of the younger young, youngest child. Mm-hmm. So as a result, I grew up largely by myself. Like I didn't hang out with my brothers or, or play with my brothers or have deep, meaningful conversations with them or anything like that. I couldn't turn to them with problems. So a lot of what I did was sort of along the lines of a single child. And as a result, I wound up getting along much better with adults, much like you said, um, than I think I would have had I had a closer relationship with my siblings. Mm. Um, so I just thought that was kind of anecdotal. Uh, having a child can be much easier on parents, they say. 
they're able to care for the child uh, more with more time devoted to them. But no matter what, there's pros and cons on both sides, and there's nothing wrong with having one child, multiple, or none at all. It's the choice of the parents on how many kids they want to have, and there's good uh, to all of them, all the choices. So let me ask you, let's flash forward 10 years into the future, 20 years into the future. You're 34, you're in your 30s. Um, We've talked about, you know, the possibility of you being a parent sometime in the future. Uh, You weren't too keen on going through childbirth, so you had talked about adopting. What would be the ideal number of children that you would like to parent? I mean, I'd probably start out with one and... It kind of depends on how our life goes from there. If I feel like I'm financially able to take care of another child, if I'm able to have, if I have enough room for the kid, and of course I'm going to have to consult my first kid and see, hey, would you like another sibling? So going about it in a very democratic sort of way. (laughs) I suppose so. That's interesting. I guess guess when you're adopting, that's certainly one way to do it. Uh, We'll see how it gets there. So we're going to take another quick break, and then we're going to come back and get your insights on what I think is kind of a unique situation here. And Hopefully the dog will stop barking by then. (laughs) Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. We are talking about what it's like to be in a single child household. So we've got about 15 questions here, kind of probing your situation because your situation's kind of unique. Uh, you're not an only child, but your brother doesn't live with us. So there's another sibling in the works, but not here on a daily basis, just to set sort of set the, uh, the ground rules here. So the first question I have for you is, what is it like growing up without seeing your brother all that much? Um... It was kind of interesting. Um, At first, I definitely did see him a few times, and it was always fun having him around. Um, But whenever he wasn't really around, I mean, I I had a lot. I did a Use your words. (laughs) Um, I definitely liked hanging out with you guys. Um, We would do family games, and we would go on vacations together. Um, and we did a lot of, um, family bonding activities, um, and kind of like I mentioned before, there were moments where you guys were a bit too busy to play with me, and I kind of got used to playing on my own, but when I did go to school, I actually made a decent amount of friends, um, and I wasn't antisocial at the time, um, I definitely think when I got older, I kind of started being a little more, um, antisocial, but I still was able to communicate with people and I still made new friends. So I don't entirely think that growing up I was a lonely child. Um, and I wouldn't say I was a spoiled child either because I appreciated all well, the... You're skipping questions. Oh, you got okay. questions later on. <laughs> I definitely um, think that for the lifestyle it was... Um, fine. It was always fun to see my brother come over, and I never really thought that there was anything wrong with the fact that he didn't live with us. So, do you, or did you ever wish that he was around more often than he was? I mean, 
yeah, there were definitely instances where whenever he was around, I I basically, since he never really came around that often, I always kind of smothered him and always wanted to spend time with him when I was really young. So it was kind of that annoying younger sister who's kind of clingy and wanted to just spend time with him. But that was mainly because he never really was around that often. So how would you say you got along with him when you were younger? Um, I'd say we were fine. Um, I don't entirely know his opinion on how we got along when we were younger. Um, we actually had watched a video where when he wa- when we were very young, um, me he uh, me and him definitely had a sibling really a very close sibling relationship. When he got older, I always enjoyed watching him um, play video games. I would normally sit with him and watch him, um, and that was kind of the main interaction we had. Um, so I wouldn't say we had a bad relationship. It's just when he did eventually stop coming over, we kind of lost touch and. A relationship, I don't exactly know where it is at this point. Do you feel like you missed out on anything with him not being around? I mean, probably. I have friends who have siblings, and um, they go through different... um, I've been over to my one friend's house who has a younger brother, and they've been through different um, instances where I'm like, oh, yeah, I've never really experienced that before, and sometimes I do wonder... What exactly would I have experienced if he was around? Like, would I have experienced the whole learning how to share thing? Would I have experienced other things that kids who have siblings have learned already? So, you know. Now, were there ever times that you felt lonely or wished you had someone else around your age in the house? I mean, yeah, there were instances at the start when you guys were busy and I wanted to play, but you, um, but I needed to, but I kind of had to wait for you guys to play. So in those instances, I was kind of like, you know, it would be cool to have someone around my age to be around to play with. Yeah. So you kind of touched on it already, but how different is your life compared to the life of your friends who have siblings? Probably a lot less uh, he- hectic, I will say. Um, my one friend and her brother kind of have an on and off relationship. Yeah. One moment they can be best friends, other they can be, f- they can be fighting. It was kind of an on and off thing, and I wasn't, and I've never really experienced that, especially not with you guys, because we never really got into arguments, and me and Sam never really got into arguments either when he was around, so... I probably missed out on that, which sounds kind of like a good thing, but I will be honest, I kind of want to see what that would actually have been like, in a way. That would be interesting. Now, do you think you're any less empathetic than someone who grew up closer to their siblings? I actually think that I'm pretty empathetic. Um, I help a lot of my friends out whenever they're feeling sad, and I've grown to really um, appreciate um, understand how to put myself in their shoes, and I know how, um, how they can feel when they're sad, and I definitely make sure that I'm kind to them whenever they are, um, and I don't think that, um, and I think that's kind of just the fact that, well, the way you guys parented me, um, rather than growing up with a sibling who always helped me whenever I had problems, Um, so I definitely don't think that aspect really affects only children for the most part. Okay, that's a very good point. Did being a single child uh, home affect how grateful you are for the things that you have? Probably not. I'm very grateful for, um, anything that you guys get me. Um, and I don't think that it made me spoiled and... Um, we kind of say it is, it's spoiled in a good way, like, I'm not a, I'm not a brat, I wasn't spoiled or rotten to the point where I became a nasty person and always wanted everything. Um, I definitely appreciate what you guys get me, and I've learned the value of a dollar, like you mentioned, so I don't really think it affected how grateful I was. Okay, and I would agree with that. Do you think living in a single-child home has connected you better with your parents? 
Definitely. I have, like, it could also be the fact that we've been stuck with each other, but I definitely. In, in the nicest possible way, though. In the nicest possible way. Um, but I definitely, th- like, you guys always said that one day you're going um, to not want to hang out with us, and so far that day has not come. I. Well, we said that about you, not about us, just to. I know. Just to clarify. Yes. <laughs> Someday we're not going to want to be around you anymore. <laughs> Enjoy it while you can. Um, yeah, um, you said that one day that um, I was going to not want to be around you guys anymore, and you said that it was probably going to be around the time I started becoming a teenager, and it's year two of being a teenager, and I still haven't experienced that, and I'm very close with you guys. That's because we're chaining you to desk in here <laughs> making you do these podcasts. Uh, oh. <laughs> That's what that chain was on my <laughs> leg. <laughs> so do you think not having a sibling around has affected your social life? Um, possibly. I think it could have had an effect on that because um, kind of when Sam stopped coming around and even when he was around and he wasn't around that often, I definitely learned that I was, I kind of needed, I kind of did things on my own. Um, I'm still a decently social person, um, but I definitely think if I had a better connection with him, I'd probably have a, I'd probably be a bit more social. Um, so I'm guessing it could have probably affected that. Okay. How would you describe your relationship with your brother now? Um. Uh, our relationship, we kind of don't exactly have a specific relationship. Like, the fact that he's been gone for a few years now, and the fact that we both change pretty much, and we have a pretty significant age gap um, in years, um, I think that's kind of affected our whole social life, because, um... I'm now into things, uh, newer things than I was before, and I think you had mentioned before um, on one of the other podcasts on how he doesn't entirely know how to react to me now because I'm I'm the complete a completely different person from how I was years and years ago. So right, okay. So can you think of any other benefits you've experienced from being in a single child home that we haven't discussed yet? Um, hmm. I mean, I definitely think that the fact that they didn't mention, well, hmm. I mean, all the benefits are kind of on the table, and I think there are some that I'm not entirely, like, I definitely think I don't experience the bad, um, the bad experiences that those with siblings would have. Um, but then again, I, so, yeah, I definitely don't experience, like, the bad sides of be of having a sibling and the fact of having some, a sibling who more than likely hates me and who's jealous of me. Yeah, been there, done that, got the (laughs) t-shirt. So, yeah, I definitely don't experience the negative sides of having multiple, of having multiple siblings, so... All right, so along those same lines, can you think of any of the downfalls you've experienced personally that we haven't talked about yet? I probably didn't experience any of the good things that came out of having siblings. Um, uh, hmm, to think of some off the top of my head, um, I guess, well... Barring a sister's clothes or something like that, you know, it's just, I, just simple things. Yeah, the simple things. Um, yeah. The simple joys that you kind of like, oh, I really like that. So yeah. I haven't experienced that, but there are simple joys, I suppose, that come from being a single child, too. So, so the last question we have is what's better, single child or siblings? I don't think there's really a better version of it, kind of like what um, the article kind of already stated. There's pros and cons to both. Um, uh, 
I definitely think that people who have siblings can definitely be happy even with all the downfalls, and I definitely think only children can also be happy even with all the downfalls, because there's good advantages to all of them, um, and I really don't think one's better than the other. Okay. Well, I think that was all we had for our research that we wanted to discuss today. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, come back, and we'll... Uh Leave the audience with your closing remarks. Go for your closing remarks. Okay, so to everyone out there, um, I just want to say that it's okay to be an only child and it's okay to have multiple siblings. One doesn't make you better than the other, and there's pros and cons to both. And to parents who are thinking about having kids, I don't think you have to worry too much if your kid um, is lonely. I would just, I would say that you can definitely have um, a happy life with only with their kid with your kid only having with you only having one kid. Um, but if you do feel as though you want to have another kid or more, that's fine. It's really just up to you. Okay. Well, all right. Unless you're in China, then it's against the law. You need a license to have more than one kid in China. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> We're not going to mention. Well, people listen to us all over the world, so you never know. Yeah, that's just. Just <laughs> don't want to encourage any illegal activity, that's all. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so that was all we had for the show today. Uh, again, I would encourage folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get videos of all of our uh, shows. Uh, if you look up insights into things or just this version of the show, you can get audio versions. If you look up and subscribe to insights into teens, we're available on Apple podcast, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, tune etc., etc. et cetera, et cetera. There really isn't a podcast service called et cetera. <laughs> Uh, I also would encourage folks to reach out, contact us, give us some show suggestions, some topics, tell us how we're doing, what you don't want us to talk about. You can email us at comments at insights into things.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can get high res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We stream five days a week on Twitch at www.twitch.tv slash insights into things. Uh, if you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you do get a free monthly Twitch Prime subscription. If you threw that our way, we'd really appreciate it. Audio versions of this podcast can be found at podcast.insightsintheteens.com. You can give us feedback on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast or on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things where you can get links to all those and much more on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. Outstanding. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>